All right, thank you for coming. Um, I'm Marta Stuckel. I'm going to do a synchronous lesson on Newton's second law. Just to give this a little bit of context, this lesson is designed for 12th grade physics students and is intended to come after a, a lab, probably simulation based around Newton's second law. So the learning target for this lesson is to be able to make explain observations and make predictions using Newton's second law. So to be able to do that, we're going to be deriving Newton's second law today. So just to kind of give a recap of how we got to this point, um, there is a simulation from FET that allows you to exert a force on an object and then uh, get a reading on the acceleration. So students would have already co collected some data in this simulation before beginning this lesson, which gives us something to work with. In this case, I gave Tim a set of data to work with that I went ahead and collected for him. So our goals today are going to be to produce a graph of the simulation data, and I'm assuming that this would be with students who have very limited exposure to creating graphs in a tool like Google Sheets. And then we're going to be able to use that graph to derive Newton's second law. So the first thing we're going to have to do is a couple of calculations related to the data from that simulation. In particular, we're going to calculate the weight of the object, the force of static friction, and the force of kinetic friction. So I'm going to switch to uh, sharing one of my windows in Google Chrome here. Uh, let's see. There we go. Whoops, that's not the one I wanted to share. Here we are. So are you able to see my screen? What you should see is a spreadsheet. Yes, I see it. All right. So what we're going to do is type a little bit of information in. So first I, wanna, um, I want you to switch to, I want you to follow along on your spreadsheet working with your data. I collected this using the file cabinet. Uh, I believe your data is with a box instead. So the first thing is going to be to enter a formula to calculate the force of gravity for this thing. So you want to type an equal sign, and that just tells the spreadsheet that you have a uh, formula coming. And then you want to click on the cell that has the mass and do times 9.81. And if you hit enter, that will give you the weight in newtons of your object. Now, we're also going to calculate the force of kinetic friction and the force of static friction. The coefficients of friction should already be in there. So all you have to do is take that coefficient times the weight. I'm going to do that once for kinetic with the subscripts K, and then once for static. All right. So were you able to do that in your spreadsheet? Hang on just a sec. All right. For static. OK, got it. Perfect. All right. So now the next thing we're going to do is graph some of this data. So what I want you to do is highlight the columns of data without friction. And right along the top, there's a little button on Google Sheets that says Insert Chart. And if you click on that, it'll give you it, a wizard to make a chart. For now, I want you to click on the tab that says Charts. And if you click on some of these options, it'll give you a preview of if you were to graph your data using that type of chart. Um, what uh, would that end up looking like? So it just gives you a quick preview of what that graph would look like. So I want you to just in the wizard get that preview of a couple different types of charts and then try to decide which one is going to be the most useful. So which type of chart does the best job of uh, showing your data? And once you have um, uh, once you've decided that, you can go ahead and I'm going to send out a little quiz, which will be a poll to decide um, what type of chart do 
you think is the best option. So I'll give you a little bit of time to play with that and pick the best type of chart. All right, looks like everybody has responded. And let's see, are you able to see the statistics of what people chose? Yep. All right, it looks like a scatter plot was the most popular option. That happens to be the one that I would have picked too. So we are on the same page. So now what we're going to do is look at how do you make that scatter plot nice and neat? Because when you're making a graph in science, you want to make sure that your axes are labeled with the right units. You want to include a line of best fit, and you want to display the equation for that line of best fit. So I'm going to switch back to sharing my screen with you. So zoom sharing. All right. So in that charts window, I'm going to choose a scatter plot. Now, if I go to customize, this is where most of those really powerful options are. So under the, in that first space, I want you to put in a title for your chart. And it can just be something like force versus acceleration. And I'm going to make a note that this has no friction. All right. Do you have your title? Yes. All right. So then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a gray box that says axis. I've got it on my screen right now. Right now it says horizontal. And on my graph, I've got acceleration on the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and type in acceleration in meters per second squared on the x. And then for that left vertical, I'm going to call that force in Newton. Go ahead and add your um, axis labels. OK, got it. All right. And then if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, there's an option that says trend line. And by default, it says none. Now, what do you notice about the shape of this graph? What kind of shape would you describe that as? It's a line. It is a beautiful line. So we're going to choose linear for that trend line. And then for the label, I can hit Use Equation. And that's going to give me the equation for that line of best fit. And I can hit Insert, and then drag that graph to where I want it. And I also want you to go ahead and do the same thing for the graph with friction. But one thing I want to notice with this, if you look at that little preview, does it have your graph starting at the origin, or is it starting at somewhere else? Uh, pretty often, if you change the bounds, of your, or if you start your graph at somewhere besides zero, it's going to change what your graph looks like. It's going to hide the trends we're trying to spot. So I'm going to go ahead and tell, my, tell Google Sheets that I want my graph to start at zero. And I'm going to have to do these on both axes. And I can okay. do that in that min box. So I want to hit zero. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Have you got your graphs? Uh, mostly. Okay. Let's see. Is there a way for me to uh, edit a graph once it's already in the sheet? There is. Oh, when I found you hover it. over, instead it. you found the little down arrow? Mm hmm. Perfect. Yes, if you go to the upper right corner of a graph, you'll get a little down arrow. And if you choose advanced edit, you can get back to that same um, menu that we used to create the graphs. Now, as you're finishing up these graphs, take a look at the slope and compare that slope to some of the numbers on the far left of your spreadsheet. Notice any significance to the slope of your graphs? Oh, they're the same. They're the same. And if you look under the list of values, for your object, it should be the same as the mass of your object. So this is going to be the first step in making sense of this graph. So that equation for the line of best fit is going to carry a lot of meaning with it. So what we can do is we can take that y equals mx plus b I have to apologize, I'm not that great at writing with my mouse. Now, since we graphed force on the y-axis, instead of writing y, I'm going to write an s. And we just decided that the slope of the graph is the mass of the object, so I'm going to call that an m. And then x, or that x-axis represents acceleration, so I'm going to use an a instead of x. Now, when there was no friction, was that um, intercept very big? Or was it a that very, very small number? Yeah. But it's so really it's close to zero. Exactly. So we can treat that intercept as zero. So we've got what parts of, so we've got um, that translated into appropriate variables and some parts that have physical meaning, um, at least for when we've got no friction. Now, um, for when we've got friction, I'm going to go ahead and call that what we have on the y-axis force applied. We still have mass times acceleration. Now, take a look at your graph with friction and look at the value for that intercept and then compare it to the list of recorded and calculated values on the far left of your spreadsheet. Do you notice anything about that intercept? Any numbers that you calculated that are very, very close to your intercept? Oh, sorry, how was another one? It's oh. uh, real close to the uh, force of kinetic friction. Exactly. So, now let me just get back to the whiteboard here. We can rewrite this as the force applied is equal to the mass of the object times acceleration plus that force of kinetic friction. Now we're going to take one last step 
we're going to make this as general as we can now that we have all this physical meaning. So we just we got force applied equals mass times acceleration plus the force of friction. We rearrange this just a little bit. I'm going to have force applied minus the force of friction equals MA. That turns into just the net force. or the total force equals mass times acceleration. And that equation happens to be Newton's second law. So any questions? Nope, I'm good. Oh, and I see you even commented. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for your time. I think that's all we need.